heard the voice of Jesus say, Come unto me and rest. Lay down, thou weary one, lay down thy head upon my breast. I came to Jesus as I was, weary and worn and sad. I found in him a resting place, and he has made me glad. I heard the voice of Jesus say, Behold, I freely give. The living water, thirsty one, Stoop down and drink and live. I came to Jesus and I drank Of that life-giving stream. My thirst was quenched, my soul revived, and now I live in him. I heard the voice of Jesus say, I am this dark world's light. Look unto me, thy morn shall rise, and all thy day be bright. I looked to Jesus, and I found in him my star, my sun. And in that light of life I'll walk, till travelling days are done. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome to Holy Cross Episcopal Church, Davidson's Mains, Edinburgh, on this, the Feast of the Baptism of Christ. We are back now into lockdown, and I'd like to thank those of you who responded to my request to the congregation to suggest ways of um, how we could best keep in touch and best remain together as a praying community. Uh, one of the key things that people mentioned was our weekly worship videos. So as long as I have the technical equipment and skill, and as long as I have the support of various members of the congregation, we'll keep on doing that. So let us continue to pray together, even though we don't see each other. And we begin by saying together the Collect for Purity. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. God is love, and we are God's children. There is no room for fear in love. We love because God loved us first. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith. God our Father, we confess to you and to our fellow members in the body of Christ that we have sinned in thought, word and deed and in what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry. Forgive us our sins and deliver us from the power of evil. For the sake of your Son who died for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. God, who is both power and love, forgive you and free you from your sins. Heal and strengthen you by the Holy Spirit and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, with God the Son, Jesus Christ, and God the Holy Spirit, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, 
you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Eternal Father, who at the baptism of Jesus revealed him to be your Son, anointing him with the Holy Spirit, grant to us who are born again by water and the Spirit that we may be faithful to our calling as your adopted children. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The reading is taken from the book of Genesis, chapter 1, verses 1 to 10, the beginning. In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty, darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. God saw that the light was good, and he separated the light from darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, Let there be a vault between the waters to separate water from water. So God made the vault and separated the water under the vault from the water above it. And it was so. God called the vault sky, and there was evening, and there was morning, the second day. And God said, Let the water under the sky be gathered to one place, and let dry ground appear. And it was so. God called the dry ground land, and the gathered waters he called seas. And God saw that it was good. This is the word of the Lord. The to the psalm is, The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. Ascribe to the Lord, you gods, Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due unto his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is a powerful voice. The voice of the Lord is a voice of splendour. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon skip like a calf and Mount Hermon like a wild ox. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The Lord sits enthroned upon the flood. The Lord sits enthroned forevermore. The Lord shall give strength to his people. The Lord shall give his people the blessings of peace. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, and people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist. He ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptised you with water, but he will baptise you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptised by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved, with you 
I am well pleased. Give thanks to the Lord for his glorious gospel. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. That's the psalm which is appointed for today for the baptism of Christ. But we had a little bit of a problem because we had to reform the rectory kitchen choir to produce a hymn at the beginning. And it was very difficult to pick a hymn. In the end, we settled on that great hymn, I Heard the Voice of Jesus Say, which was actually written in this diocese in Kelso by the Minister of Kelso. And we sung it to that great um, tune, Kingsfold, folk tune, which um, was set to these words by Vaughan Williams, who, who I believe is named after our Holy Cross organist, Vaughan Townhill. Now, why, was, why is this hymn, one of the few hymns which is suggested for today's feast. Well, I think it's because it talks about waters and the life-giving stream. And there is a problem with this feast. It's not really a problem, only a problem to strange people like historians like me. But when the Romans were in Cramond, which was when the first Christians came to this part of Britain, they would have celebrated the Feast of the Epiphany. But the Feast of the Baptism of Christ only really came in in the 1960s as a sort of unpacking of the Feast of Epiphany. Epiphany means manifestation, so it's Jesus being shown to the wise men, as you can see up there in our east window. But it's not just that. We in the West tend to think it's about the wise men, but it's also about the Baptism of Christ. And our Eastern Christian brothers and sisters, when they hear what we call the Epiphany, which they call the Theophany, they think of the baptism of Christ. And another thing that comes into this feast is when Jesus turned water into wine at the wedding at Cana, which is another manifestation of who he is. Key question is, who is Jesus? This is all too rich for one feast, so we unpack it. Now, even if we just take this one part of the mystery of the Epiphany, the manifestation of Jesus, Jesus' baptism in the Jordan, still there's, there's really too much for us to cope with in one celebration. In our collect, if you're listening to it, one doesn't always listen to collects, it says that Jesus' baptism shows him to be the Son of God, and then it shows that we become adopted sons and daughters of God in the Son, in Jesus. But there's more to the feast than that. It also reveals the Holy Trinity, and it also sanctifies creation. And I want to talk about those two elements, because I think they are very important, but they're also relevant to us in lockdown. Now, first of all, the Trinity. Where do we see the Trinity in this biblical gospel story. Well, it's quite clear when you see it, you have the Spirit descending on Jesus in the form of a dove. You hear the voice of the Father thundering from heaven and coming down upon the Son. So you have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You have the dove, the voice, and Jesus. It's a bit like the story of the Transfiguration, now, in the Orthodox churches, uh, what they sing on this feast is, amongst many other things, when you, O Lord, were baptised in the Jordan, the worship of the Trinity was made manifest. The worship of the Trinity was made manifest. And this means, amongst many other things, we are not alone. Now, there is many people have said that there's an epidemic of loneliness in our society and the lockdown can make that worse. Everyone's noticing that there is an increase in mental health problems at the moment in our society. But Jesus, who shared 
our aloneness on the cross is also shows us in his very person that we are not alone he is not alone he is the beloved son of the father and he has the spirit with him god is a community of love a communion of love now by our baptism we become adopted sons and daughters in the son we become incorporated into the life of the Trinity, not because of our nature, because we're human, we're not God, but because Jesus, who is human and is God, is our ladder into the life of God. And that ensures that we are not alone. We're never alone, even when it seems that we are. Often we, we, we can't see that, we feel very alone. But occasionally, as with Jesus in the Jordan, the heavens open and we realize that we are not alone. We have many brothers and sisters, and our calling as a church is to live this mystery of communion. And the question is, how can we best do that? How can we best live as a community, as an open community, where people can come and join us and be part, sharing the life of the Holy Trinity through baptism? Now, the Trinity is manifest in the baptism of Jesus. But there's one other thing. In the Orthodox liturgy, they say, today creation is enlightened, and today nature is glad. Nature, creation. Christ descends into the waters. He turns back the forces of chaos. Now, if you've ever looked at one of the Eastern icons, of the baptism of Christ, you'll see a little person or two little people sitting in the waters and turning away from the feet of Jesus as he stands there in the waters. And they symbolize the forces of chaos turning. Um, in Psalm 114, it said, the sea saw and fled, the Jordan turned back. And in our reading from Genesis, which we heard earlier, we see that water, as with everything in the Bible, is not just physical water, not just the sort of thing we'd see out there in the Firth of Forth. Water is a symbol. Water is there in creation, even before the world is created and the waters are created. It's the water of chaos. It's a symbol of the primal chaos that we sometimes feel in our hearts. And that chaos which is a bit, we touch it a little bit in loneliness and depression and things like that, that chaos departs and flees at the presence of Christ. Although, interestingly enough, it's still there in the icon. It still sits there. So that suggests it doesn't go totally away until the last days. And we live with these little sea monsters down in the bottom of the waters of our lives. Now, Today, the baptism of Christ is the beginning of the sanctification of creation. And that says quite an important thing. Christianity is not just about us. A lot of people think Christianity is just about living well and being nice and being good humans. But actually, it is about the whole of creation. Jesus came not to redeem just us, but to redeem everything, animals, the whole world, the inanimate creation, everything. And we sometimes get glimpses of this new creation. One of the gifts of the last lockdown for many of us was that we could commune with nature. We could see, I was going to say we can see God present in nature, but it's really just seeing the beauty of the natural world. And we know that God is present there. We know it's God's creation. But it's not like we're looking at God. We're looking at God's creation and seeing him reflected there. And I think this challenges us. It challenges us to care for creation. And it also challenges us as a community at Holy Cross because we have this beautiful garden around us here. And how can we best use this to serve our community and to serve God? So there we are. Today's feast teaches us that God is a communion of love into which we are invited. And it teaches us that God wishes to sanctify the whole of creation and has begun that.
we get sanctified by the waters of baptism. Jesus himself, who is perfect and sinless, himself sanctifies the waters and pushes back the waters of chaos. Who is God? Who are we? And what is the destiny of creation? And I think all of these are relevant because they show us about love. They show us what our life is really like, whatever we feel. And they show us that Jesus is the key to unlock the whole of the created universe. So we give thanks to God for this mystery. Now let us say together the creed which is structured on this great mystery of the Trinity, which is love. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one substance with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate of the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now let us pray for God's world, and let us pray for the church, and let us pray for each other. For the world, as we begin this new year, that the waters of chaos may be made smooth by the overshadowing of the Spirit. We pray particularly today for the United States of America, for a smooth transfer of power, for peace in Armenia and all who are suffering there in the wars in the Caucasus. We pray for China. We pray for all working to overcome the pandemic and roll out vaccination. And we also pray for everyone who is working to save our environment. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the church, we pray for John our Bishop, we pray for our congregation here at Holy Cross and our sister churches, that we may be courageous witnesses to a God who is a communion of love, a trinity of love, and that we may be witnesses to the vocation of the whole of creation to unite in God's praise. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who are passing through the deep waters of suffering in body, mind or spirit, especially those who are suffering through this lockdown and pandemic. May they know the presence of God alongside them and may they not be overwhelmed by their pain. We pray today in our Holy Cross prayer list for Jenny, for Nancy, for Graham, for Robert, for Andy and Julia, for Lucy, for Min Min Yu, Margaret, Andrew, for Jane Allen, Mike Holmes, Molly, Alan Clark, for Catherine, for Isabel, and also for the families of Eric Tonothy and Jean Patterson. We pray now in a moment of silence for all those who are on our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, we remember with thanksgiving all who have passed through the waters of death and are now in the eternal presence of God, 
We pray for Eric Tonothy and Jean Patterson, who died recently. We pray for those whose anniversaries occur at this time, including John Hewitt, priest, and Joan McLean. And we pray for all those whom we love but see no longer. May they be at peace through the redeeming love shown in the life, death and resurrection of Jesus, God's beloved Son and our Saviour, Lord in your mercy. Heavenly Father, at the Jordan you revealed Jesus as your Son. May we recognise him as our Lord and know ourselves to be your beloved children, through Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. We meet in Christ's name. Let us share his peace. Peace be with you. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become the cup of our salvation. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Worship and praise belong to you, God our Maker. Out of nothing you called all worlds into being, and still you draw the universe to its fulfilment. Day and night celebrate your glory till time shall be no more. In Christ, your only begotten Son, you have revealed yourself to the world. By the guiding of a star, you made him known to the nations as the son of David and king of Israel, that in following him we might be led from darkness into his marvellous light. Filled with the Spirit, who descended upon your Son at his baptism in the Jordan, we who are baptised in his name strive for his heavenly kingdom, in whose radiance we are transfigured and the earth transformed. As children of your redeeming purpose, who celebrate the manifestation of your Son, we offer you our praise with angels and archangels and with the whole company of heaven, singing the hymn of your unending glory. Holy, holy, holy God, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Glory and thanksgiving be to you, most loving Father. In Jesus the Messiah, you have come to us. Our hope is built on him, in whom you are well pleased. Having been shown to the world as your beloved Son, he proclaimed the good news of your kingdom. The blind received their sight, the lame walked, the lepers were cleansed, and the captives set free. At his word, water became wine. The hungry were fed with bread, and the dead were raised. Before he was given up to suffering and death, desiring to complete the work for which he came into the world, at supper with his disciples, he took bread and offered you thanks. He broke the bread and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, it is broken for you.
After supper he took the cup. He offered you thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant. It is poured out for you and for all that sins may be forgiven. Do this in remembrance of me. We now obey your Son's command. We recall his blessed passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and we look for the coming of his kingdom. Made one with him, we offer you these gifts, and with them ourselves, a single, holy, living sacrifice. Hear us, most merciful Father, and send your Holy Spirit upon us, and upon this bread and this wine, that overshadowed by his life-giving power, they may be the body and blood of your Son, and we may be kindled with the fire of your love, and renewed for the service of your kingdom. Help us, who are baptised into the fellowship of Christ's body, to live and work to your praise and glory. May we grow together in unity and love, until at last in your new creation we enter into our heritage in the company of the Virgin Mary, John the Baptist, the Apostles and Prophets, and of all our brothers and sisters living and departed. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be to you, Lord of all ages, world without end. Amen. The living bread is broken for the life of the world. Lord, unite us in this sign. As our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Do not bring us to the time of trial, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. And now take a moment to make an act of spiritual communion. Jesus is present here in the sacrament. He is present in spirit in your hearts now. Recognise that he's there, thank him for being there, and rest for a moment in his presence. Give thanks to our gracious God, whose mercy endures forever. Lord of all time and eternity, you opened the heavens and revealed yourself as Father 
in the baptism of Jesus, your beloved Son. By the power of your Spirit, complete the heavenly work of our rebirth through the waters of the new creation, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And may we all soon gather here again in this holy place and see each other and receive Holy Communion uh, together again. Um, keep safe, look after yourselves, and God bless you. May God the Father, who led the wise men by the shining of a star to find Christ the light from light, lead you also in your pilgrimage to find the Lord. Amen. May God the Son, who turned water into wine at the wedding feast at Cana, transform your lives and make glad your hearts. May God the Holy Spirit, who, who came upon the beloved Son in his baptism in the River Jordan, pour out his gifts upon you who have come to the waters of new birth. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with you and all those whom you love and care for now and forever. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Thank you.